Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudasa Buddhang Dhammang Sanghang Namasami So when we were conceiving of this evening, um, a nice theme, which we thought for the, the whole evening uh, and then on into the morning, would be the theme of beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, and beautiful in the end. Uh, that's a stock phrase. It's a, a phrase which you see come up again and again throughout the uh, the Buddhist canon. Um, the Buddha would often uh, repeat himself just to uh, yeah, get his teachings into his listeners' ears and into their hearts. Um, and that's really what we're doing with, with practice. That's what kama is, is action. It's that which we repeat, repeat and uh, nurture and bring into being. Uh, and manifest. So this phrase, uh, adi kalyanang, maje kalyanang, pariyosana kalyanang, it comes up in the evening and the morning chanting um, in chanting books throughout the Theravada Buddhist world. And this word kalyana is beautiful. Um, it's a name uh, in India. You, if you, you might know someone named kalyana. I know a little baby. I think she's about 18 months old and she is so cute she is so cute and her name is kalyani um so it means beautiful as in a person or a place uh, but in a buddhist context the buddha uses it also with the term kalyana mitta or a beautiful friend a spiritual friend a good and wise noble advisor um, someone who we can walk the path with uh, and he also uses it in this context so the Dhamma, uh, the teaching of the Buddha, is beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, and beautiful in the end. Um, so it's not like you have to you know, grit your teeth and just uh, utterly, um, yeah, just practice in a really uh, despicable and painful and um, yeah, ugly way. And then eventually at some point you'll reach Nibbana and then that's when things get beautiful. But um, when you live near monasteries or when you live near practitioners, really, you see this. You see beautiful people all over the place. I feel uh, so fortunate to have lived in monasteries basically for the last um, 15 or 20 years. And just you meet really good people on their best behavior, uh, beautiful people, beautiful souls. And um, that's because, yeah, not all of us who are coming to a monastery, visiting a monastery, have necessarily attained anything. Um, but we're trying, and we're practicing things which make the heart uh, beautiful, which make um, features, make, um, not to get too esoteric, but an aura, the overall gestalt, the, the picture of someone is just bright and, and beautiful. So this is a, especially apt on New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, this is... Hopefully it can be a beautiful ending. Yeah, we've got maybe three hours and 55 minutes, 53 minutes, 57 minutes left in the year. And we've come here because we want to make it beautiful. We want to make it as great as possible. And what a uh, nice way to do that than by sitting and meditating together and taking precepts and uh, practicing, um, yeah, practicing faith practicing faith, not just um, doing faith or trying to enforce some kind of belief, but practicing faith. We'll be doing a lot of chanting. Um, and this is a neat way to end the year. Um, and at midnight, it'll flip over to hopefully a beautiful beginning. Um, we'll have more reflections and more chances for chanting and just practicing in uh, a nice way, just starting things off right, starting things off right. 
Um, Janice and I just got back two days ago, I think it was, maybe not even two days ago, from a, a trip to Bodh Gaya, which is where the Bodhi tree was, where the Buddha attained enlightenment. And I was just realizing it as we were sitting here, a kind of parallel or a kind of similar or a comparison between like Christmas trees and like the Bodhi tree and not, you know, don't want to get into like comparing religions or anything. We're incredibly grateful and it's wonderful to be in this uh, sacred and beautiful, beautiful space. Um, but Christmas trees, again, you know, Jesus wasn't praising Christmas trees. It's just something which has kind of come up and, and they're a beautiful thing for what they are. You know, you come around and you celebrate with family, celebrate with friends, and it's this beautiful bit of green that you bring into your house. But really, it's a beautiful ending, full stop. If you leave the Christmas tree in your house, just wait a couple weeks and yeah, it's going to start falling apart in your house. And um, yeah, that's what happens. It's, it's end. We've cut the root and brought this thing into our house and uh, that's the end. And eventually you're just going to have to throw it away somewhere. Um, but with a Bodhi tree, uh, basically, when you find Bodhi trees at monasteries or in people's houses, uh, they're living, living uh, entities. Yeah, we've got, uh, they've been planted with a beautiful seed of a Bodhi tree. As we were sitting underneath the, the Bodhi tree, um, yeah, seeds, you know, were actually falling on us. Um, so you can take, theoretically, and I'm sure people have done this, you take a, a seed and you plant it. That's a beautiful beginning and water it, nurture it. A stem will come up and then you've got a trunk and then you've got leaves and then they, um, yeah, after 25, 2600 years, um, yeah, you've got a, a living tradition. And that's what we're doing. We're watering the leaves of our own Bodhi. Bodhi is awakening, enlightenment, and that's what we're, we're practicing for. And we want the whole process to be um, attractive. Uh, because we want it to be sustainable. Um, there's a lot of modern research on forming habits. There's a wonderful book called, um, what's that book I love? By James Clear, by Ato Atomic Habits by James Clear. I love it. I love it. I love that book. Um, but basically he highlights four characteristics of habits which make them uh, sustainable and actually, um, yeah, something that you look forward to do. And if you, a habit or something that you're trying to uh, bring into your life is not something which you want to do, then you won't want to do it and it won't become a habit. You'll just forget about it. So these four qualities, you want your habits to be OAs. So O-A-E-S. You want them to be obvious. You want them to be attractive. You want them to be easy and you want them to be satisfying. So as we uh, end 2022 and we begin 2023, this is a time for, it can be a time for uh, starting up new and wholesome and hopefully beautiful habits that we um, yeah, bring into our lives and bring into our communities, bring into our families, uh, bring into our, our Sangha. Um, when the Buddha, uh, taught, he often taught in these uh, lists, similar to uh, James Clear. Um, but in many of these lists, you'll find three different qualities coming up in the beginning, the relative uh, beginning of these lists. And those three are uh, sadha, or faith, sila, or morality or precepts, and dana, or generosity. So these three qualities, um, you find um, Sadha or faith at the beginning of the list of the five powers. You find sila at the beginning of the list of the threefold gradual training. You find dana at the beginning of the list of the three types of uh, cultivation. Uh, you find dana and sila and maybe even sadha in the ten perfections, and they're all towards the beginning. So these are beautiful in the beginning practices, and they're ones which we can, um, yeah, really. Uh, epitomize uh, tonight and uh, going forward. And they're ones which are really graspable. They're ones which are really uh, approachable. So you get 
um, certain qualities like emptiness. And there are ways to approach emptiness right now in the present moment, uh, but it's also a very lofty ideal, um, something which many people might think, what does that even mean? What, how would you bring emptiness? What does that look like? How do you do emptiness in the present moment? Um, and you can, but these other things of faith and precepts or morality and generosity, these you can do right now. We've already practiced them tonight. It's only, we're only an hour into the evening and we've actually practiced ceremonies or rituals uh, in which we live these out. So uh, we do the chanting. And um, as I mentioned, the, when the Buddha taught, uh, it wasn't just totally, uh, totally extemporaneous. You never have any idea what he's going to teach. He taught patterns. He taught patterns which were, um, he would teach again and again and revisit and revisit in different contexts. Uh, from the Buddha's teachings. So what a ritual is, is basically uh, taking a meaningful piece of text or a meaningful choreography and then acting it out. And so faith, we can do it through chanting. And chanting is something which uh, most Americans are not familiar with uh, outside of maybe, I mean, pop music is really one form of kind of modern day chanting. You've got the refrain uh, over and over again. And fortunately, I can't think of any modern pop music at the moment, uh, or else it might ruin my night. Um, but uh, basically just repeating the thing over and over again. So um, what we chanted, both in Pali and in English, uh, this is, the Pali is of course standardized. You can visit any Theravada country, Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, um, Laos, Cambodia, and you'll hear roughly the same Pali chanting. And in the English version that we do, you'll hear it at any of these Ajahn Chah uh, or extended branch monasteries. Um, so this is a, uh, a format. It's a form which we uh, enact so as to nurture our faith faculty, nurture this beautiful aspect of faith. And that's, uh, if your faith is not beautiful, then it's not Buddhist faith. Uh, and uh, everything that, that the Buddha taught uh, really is inclining towards release, inclining towards truth, is a manifestation of truth. So if uh, your way of approaching chanting is one of, of rote, or if you've got some kind of bias that, um, yeah, it, you don't understand the meaning, or um, you're somewhat averse to chanting, then no worries at all. We've got enough other people and we've got microphones. So if Ajahn Nisibo and I and I and Yannicka are up here with, with microphones, it doesn't matter if you guys chant or not. Um, but if you do, it can be wonderful. Just harmonizing your voice with others, harmonizing your intention with others. That's what we're doing. Um, and we're praising uh, the Buddha, someone who has attained enlightenment, not, um, yes, the historical Buddha who lived about 2,600 years ago, but the qualities of enlightenment, um, the qualities of his teaching and the qualities of his disciples, which, uh, yeah, there are still, uh, this is our faith, people who are uh, enlightened and becoming enlightened today. Uh, many of the teachers who we visit in Thailand are held to be living enlightened saints. Um, and these are the, this is what we're, we're chanting. This is what we've already chanted. Uh, both in the English and the Pali, with the homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And that's what the Iti Piso chanting is as well. So Iti Piso uh, is Pali for, um, it's basically shorthand for what this uh, very succinct um, epitome of recollection of the Triple Gem, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, um, Iti Piso is the essence of that. So. Um, it really in itself doesn't have much meaning. Iti is like the Pali equivalent of a quotation mark. 
uh, upi or p means further and so means he or the one who so basically iti piso means quote again the one who so it's not that inspiring in and of itself um but it's the shorthand for what what we're chanting which is uh i'll just chant it uh, quickly through iti piso bhagava arahang sama sambudo vija charna sampano sugato loka vidu Anutaro purisa dhamma sarati satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati swakato bhagavata dhammo sanditiko akaliko ehi pasiko opanaiko pachatang veditabo vinyuhiti supatipano bhagavato savakasango ujupatipano bhagavato savakasango nyaya patipano bhagavato savakasango samichi patipano bhagavato savakasango Yadidang chatari purisa yugani atta purisa pugala esa bhagavato savaka sango ahuneo pahuneo dakineo anjali karaneo anutarang punya ketang loka sati. So that's what we'll be chanting, and the translations for that are on the front. We've already done it once. And yeah, we don't want to uh, chant it in a way. We're going to be chanting it um, in two different spells, once of 54 times in about a minute, or I'm sorry, in about an hour. Uh, each, uh, each time through will be about a minute. So we'll be trying to keep people a bit on pace. And to do it in an hour, it is vigorous. So um, some people, if you have heard chanting, maybe Gregorian chanting in a Christian tradition or Thich Nhat Hanh chanting, it can be quite... Uh, melodic and very calming. Um, what we'll be doing tonight, uh, it's more eliciting like vigor. So um, we'll be doing it a fairly quick clip, which will help hopefully keep everybody awake. Um, this is what we're aiming for, awakeness, wakefulness. Uh, and certainly chanting this at that speed uh, with speakers and things like that, it'll be invigorating. Uh, to say the least. So uh, it's almost like at many monasteries, I lived at a monastery in Thailand, Wat Phakram, Wat Chittabhavana, uh, in Batum Thani, Thailand, where we chanted this three, three nights a week. We would start chanting at about 9.30 p.m. and then chant uh, up until um, 11.30 p.m., uh, three nights a week. And it's invigorating. Like the people there, the monks there, and the uh, lay people, they're like... Um, Iron Man, Iron Woman, like triathlon type people, like the triathlon of the, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Um, impressive people. That is not easy. Um, you'll see when we get to the, the chanting. Um, but what we're trying to do is uh, take all of the beautiful things which you can read about in the English translation of an awakened mind, an awakened heart, of uh, those teachings which are beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, beautiful in the end, which lead inward, which uh, speak to the truth and becoming and praising enlightened people who have done the same. We're taking all of our uh, ideals and mental pictures of each of those words. Um, and as you're reading it, I think I put commas or semicolons about um, where the uh, English translations um, are broken up as well. So to some extent, yeah, I, th I think I did that somewhat well. So um, each of the words you can kind of uh, translate back into English what they mean. And you really want to, um, oftentimes people will pick out one particular uh, or just one, one of those words like um, uh, the blessed one, Bhagavato, or pure one, Arahant, uh, or the knower of the worlds, Loka Vidu, or Vija Charana Sampano, one who's impeccable in conduct and understanding, that which is apparent here and now, um, something which is worthy of hospitality, worthy of offering, offerings, worthy of respect, uh, taking those qualities, especially the ones which naturally hit your heart, and condensing them down. It's like boiling. It's like boiling, boiling down uh, all of our inspiration into this pithy and essentialized and epitomized chant and then just repeating it and taking that quality and then just bringing it into the heart, even into the, the physical 
resonance we're chanting with our lungs and the lungs are surrounding the heart and just bringing this heart uh, bringing the chant into the heart consolidating it uh, there's something called a sigil i believe it's spelled s-i-g s-i-g-i-l-e something like that it's a uh, a way of um kind of writing out resolutions and you kind of um yeah you you write out the resolution again and again and then you figure out ways to condense the actual forms of the letters into a compact symbol and so that's what we're doing with this this chanting is we're taking all of the beautiful qualities that we're talking about all of our burgeoning faith or already blossomed faith or uh, belief or trust in that which is beautiful and if any of this strikes you as unbeautiful don't worry you don't have to have faith in it take all that's beautiful and bring that in and make much of it and just warm you're basically warming up that part of the heart as you you chant again and again and again um yeah really bringing it bringing it into the heart that's what that's what faith is faith is a practice so as we recite at a fairly quick clip again and again we're bringing this in um, and just practicing it practicing it um, similarly with uh, with precepts or with with sila this is something else which is beautiful in the beginning um, for people who are so inclined had the option to take the, the five precepts and this is a ceremony which uh, I believe we do it once a month on the first Saturday of each month at St. Mark's on the Saturday on the Saturday morning and then on Monday maybe the first Monday of the month on discord uh, an actual chance to formally retake the precepts this is something which uh, people in Thailand will do almost every day if you want you can do it to your shrine every morning and uh, if you want to really bring power and bring uh, force and momentum to your practice of precepts or integrity then making a habit out of it make it obvious make it attractive make it easy make it satisfying similar with your faith make your faith make your symbols of faith your buddha statues your way of chanting make it obvious make it attractive make it easy make it satisfying uh, your buddha statue we this afternoon we were uh, hosted by um, uh, yeah, a woman who uh, led us into her house and first thing you walk in the door and you see a beautiful buddha statue beautiful buddha statue and it's obvious you open the door and right there you've got the most important thing in your life awakening i want to be awake right in this present moment and more and more awake as i go throughout my life maybe into future lives um, obvious you want it to be attractive get the most beautiful buddha statue you can if you are not uh attracted by one of those like super skinny buddhas with like the ribs showing and stuff don't put that in your house you can you can get whatever kind of beautiful buddha statue you want uh, made out of whatever uh, material is the most nice to look at and that really will depend and there's all sorts of different types of buddha statues obvious attractive make it easy um, bowing is an easy thing to do especially if it's right uh, in front of you when you walk into your house it's easy you just okay you can bow if you want and that's another way to uh, power up your your practice of uh, of faith and um, you want it to be satisfying so you don't want to force yourself to uh, do all these things past the point where it's useful so if while we're chanting um, yeah if you find it unsatisfying then really um, you might want to examine that am i is this really unsupportive of my practice or is it just a little bit challenging and something which i haven't done yet that much um but if it it does come a point when you say okay this is this is a bit much then yeah you can step out and um yeah get get some more breath take some get some headspace 
um, with the precepts, uh, make them obvious. So we've got our schedules. So this is good for habits in general, is to uh, put them on your calendar. So whether you do it every day, uh, in Ajahn Chah branch monasteries, it's the first thing we do every day is as soon as we wake up, we, well, before we go, before we wake up, before we go to bed, actually going and arranging our room, arranging the place where we sleep with our head kind of pointed in the direction of uh, a Buddha statue, if we have one. Or I just found out there's an, an app, actually, which will tell you the direction of Bodh Gaya, kind of like, you know, a Mecca type thing. Okay, Bodh Gaya is this direction. You can tell on your phone if you got your GPS on. Okay, I'm going to bow towards... I don't know. I don't have the app. This is just a watch. But basically, okay, oh, guy is that way. I'm going to sleep with my head in that direction. And then as soon as you wake up, beautiful, beautiful in the beginning. As soon as you wake up, bow, bowing again. If you're, if you like bowing, if bowing is beautiful to you, it's a great way to orient your, your whole day. And then I do know people who will take the precepts first thing that they wake up. Um, the Buddha used that, that chant. Panati pata veramani sikapadang samadhyami adenadana veramani sikapadang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature, to refrain from taking that which is not given, from sexual misconduct, from false and harmful speech, from intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to carelessness. What a nice way to start your day, a nice way to start your year. Uh, this is what I want to do. This is going to uh, point me in the right direction for the rest of the day. I want to do this for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year, the rest of this life, the rest of every life until I attain Nibbana, Yava Nibbana. Um, and then generosity, uh, Dana. This is, it's a broad term. Um, and in Thailand, there are, yeah, the institution of monastics in America, uh, with a Protestant work ethic. Um, it's not just a few people who see monks with uh, what they perceive as begging bowls just out on the street. And what a repulsive sight. Um, you know, someone who's just a, a leech on society. Um, but regardless of whatever you believe about monks, it's a beautiful institution to have in a country to uh, provide an opportunity, especially um, for older people to be able to offer alms every day when you've, uh, yeah, you go out on alms round in Thailand and yeah, people who can hardly walk out of their door, but who, you know, they can wake up at uh, 630, make some sticky rice, and then just walk out the door and put a little ball of sticky rice you know, it's a symbolic act. It's a practice of generosity, which you can do every day in a Buddhist country. Uh, um, but you don't just have to give to uh, monks. The Buddha was once asked uh, by, I think it was a Brahmin, who should I give to? And he says, well, give where you have faith. And that's just great advice. You don't have to give to monks. You don't have to give to Buddhists. Give to whatever charity. Give to whatever family member. Give to whatever. Give, give, give wherever you find uh, that it's most helpful, and find ways to make that giving systematic and make it obvious and make it attractive and make it easy and make it satisfying and do it as much as you can. And in a Buddhist context, um, giving is not just the giving of balls of sticky rice or of food or of uh, bells or of flowers or incense or candles or... Uh, Nintendo or whatever the modern equivalent of Nintendos are or whatever you're going to give on uh, Christmas. It's uh, giving of the heart. It's giving up. And we're also practicing that when you uh, sit down. So after we've bowed first thing in the morning, after we've recited precepts um, for the monastic, we've got 227 of them. So if you think five is a lot, then um, yeah, we got a lot more. Um, but they're fun, and we recite them. Um, they're, it's obvious, and it's attractive, it's easy, and it's satisfying when we uh, chant them every morning. Um, and similarly with giving, just giving yourself to the meditation cushion. Uh, commit 
to sit, commit to sit. And um, yeah, that's a way of practicing giving first thing in the morning. And we'll be practicing that uh, on tonight as we hopefully create a beautiful ending for 2022. And we'll start 2023 off in a beautiful way with uh, more chanting. And um, yeah, maybe we can even do recite the precepts again together tomorrow morning just to uh, start off the new year in a nice way. And certainly there'll be lots of meditation and also lots of perhaps nodding. So we got coffee out there. Um, keep yourselves awake and I uh, wish everybody, hope everyone has a, a wonderful evening. We'll be together tonight and I'm just really grateful to uh, be here and uh, to see, yeah, we've got the best seats in the house because we see all the beautiful and uh, bright faces and uh, everyone isn't yet totally tired and uh, the, the lights are, aren't yet going out, but um, it's really uh, beautiful to see so many people and hope everybody can hold that grateful uh, intention through the evening and on into the morning. So I think our next step will be just a an hour of sitting or walking meditation. <laughs>